Hey, good morning. It's Wednesday, October 13th. Thanks so much for being here. You know, we've been talking about the wonder of God, the nearness of God, the beauty of his glory that's all around us. And those things we need to hang on to. They are what life is all about. But life is also about another part that is difficult for us. Life is also about death. Death is connected to our fall, to the evil forces in this world, and then just the impact of the fall on life itself. And we're seeing that in strikingly vivid, stabbing, shearing ways with the COVID or other things when people who appear to be perfect in life from all outward appearances, they die. Sometimes a very painful and excruciating death. Sometimes death comes quickly and it takes your breath away. Other times you have little time to prepare as I did when Ruth died. But we've got to make this discussion about death a part of life and about the glory of God and the wonder of God. You see, if I don't include death and the wonder of God and the purposes of God, then I shut out part of his plans. David in Psalm 139 talks about how blown away, blown away he is by God's intimate detail and concern and care and investment and involvement in every moment of his life. And as he gets near the end of the Psalm, he says these words that are just mind blowing. He says, Lord, you have fashioned me. You know everything about me. And indeed, all my life, if you will, one translation says, all the moments of my life, the steps of my life are all planned out by you before there was even a one, one day in history. It was all purposed and planned by God. Our discussion right now was purposed by God. The joys that we know, the sorrows that we know, and then the finality of the searing pain and loss of death. But if we exclude the love and kindness of God from death, then we shut ourselves off from hope. Because on the one level, death makes no sense, and it doesn't. You know why it makes no sense? Because we have opted for pathways as a human race which are contrary to trusting God. That makes no sense. But Still, when it comes down to that moment of death, when it actually occurs, and there's a finality to it, there's no getting it back. How do I find comfort there? Well, we look at David's response. He says that there's not a moment that is planned that happens, it's not planned by God, it was not written down in his book before it all started. But then the next couple of lines in Psalm 139, what does he do with this? Is he bitter? Is he angry? Does he take it as God being kind of robotically in control of his life? Is he not supposed to have feelings? No, what David does is he responds in this explosion of wonder. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh Lord? How beautiful it is to be with you. And then he recalls this the intimate planning of God. And then he goes to bed at night and in the morning he wakes up because he knows that's been planned for him. It's not just random that we wake up. It's not just random when death occurs. Death is not an easy subject, but it becomes far more terrifying if we avoid it. And it becomes ultimately terrifying if we try and separate death from God. If God's not in it, then we are victims of circumstance, 
of random chance, of fatalism, of a cruel deism, or of a God who doesn't care. But if God is in it, and he is determined to bring good and glory and peace to us through even the most difficult patterns of life, then with tears we're able to say with Paul, death, where is your victory? You have lost your sting. Because I have comfort in God, who has planned out every moment, including the moment of our death, including the moment of my death. I'm closer to it than many of you in terms of age. But I may outlive many of you because of God's timing and God's purpose. What we need to know is that it's a good, kind, and loving purpose that he has for us. And that's our hope. That's why we have comfort in death. We can have comfort in death. We don't need to be ruled by it. Even in our pain and our hurt and the difficulties that we have, we can agree with David, Lord, how precious are your thoughts. Thank you, you've not abandoned us, even in the darkness of death. But you've brought us into the wonder of the light of your son which takes that darkness, puts it in perspective, and gives us hope so that we can say with David, Oh Lord, how precious to me are your thoughts and your plans, even as there's tears. And that's the thought for this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Um, you know, consider subscribing and turn on post notifications. Check out our resource section, everydaytalk24.com, everydaytalk247.com. And again, thank you so much for being here especially when we have to talk about hard things like this. Lord willing, we'll see you tonight. You have a great day. Bye-bye.